Welcome back to Texas Practice. You take a look at the Wednesday practice headlines. Texas starts 3-0 and for the fifth straight season. They did start 3-0 and last year, but Warren's pretty happy with their young unit undefeated. Malcolm Brown leads true freshman in rushing yards versus FBS opponents, 264 yards for the freshman from Cibolo Steel. And the Texas defense recorded three interceptions in the first quarter against UCLA. Last week, you just heard from Dwayne Aquina, the longtime secondary coach. First time, three interceptions in one quarter since 2007 versus Baylor. And, of course, the Horns will get these this Saturday off. They're preparing for the October 1st game in Ames, Iowa, against Iowa State. Now, Malcolm Brown is just one of really three running backs that we've seen a lot for Texas. Definitely going to see number two, Fozzie Whitaker. So you take a look at Malcolm right there, the true freshman catching passes from strength and conditioning coach Benny Wiley. And yes, that is a full getup right there in a full jumpsuit. I mean, this is a guy who who we've been laughing at it, but not only is he does he wear that to make sure he knows where the guys are temperature-wise, and if he's too hot, they may be too hot. But you see him for a strength and conditioning coach involved in a lot of the drills, Ahmad. Is that rare? It is rare, and his enthusiasm and his energy is contagious, and you feel the players. They want to be around that guy, yeah. and that's rare that you want to be yeah. around your strength and conditioning it coach. It's very me. rare. As we take a closer look at the Texas depth chart in the backfield, fullbacks and tailbacks, we've seen Cody Johnson as the short yardage spe- specialist. He has 43 rushing yards, but has certainly cashed in in the red zone for Texas. Jamison Berryhill has been a lock-on fullback blocker when he's in there. You may be looking for an ISO, and you probably need to follow Jamison Berryhill. Now, Joe Bergeron is a younger running back with DJ Monroe. They've been trying to get those guys involved, but right now it looks like Malcolm Brown is the main guy. You're going to see Fozzie Whitaker out of Wildcat, and you're also going to see maybe Bergeron later on in the game when he's got fresh legs uh, to wear down the opposition. Coach Wyatt running his wide receivers through the pace. Now, what is this drill here for? Well, you see those three cones there. Those are all points, and... As a wide receiver, you have to try to imagine those in ball games. You always try to have landmarks as to where you're going to cut. You know, if they tell you they want their break at 10 yards, KD, the quarterback, the offense is depending on you to break at 10 yards. Mm-hmm. So what that's allowing you to do is to set up your footwork. You can see him there. Uh, if you need to come off of that left foot, you need to come off of that right foot in order to make that break on the inside. You're working and preparing now. And this is basically just the top of your route. The last five or six yards on a break, it's not the beginning. These are guys that have already uh, been in their route, maybe five or six yards, and are getting ready to break and shutting down and aiming at certain points to make sure they come off appropriately. Now, why do they have a part here is that for for all the jostling that all you defensive backs give the wide receivers where you, you kind of you, you're, you're grabbing their hands and grabbing their forearms indeed it is and and this is something that happens within the play you know in in the of course in the nfl game you're not allowed to touch wide receivers after five yards i'll uh, touch anyone anymore <laughs> yeah well true but in college football you can still play this game and i always tell younger dbs that there's nothing wrong with doing it being physical with them because if a wide receiver is playing with you with his hands Mm -hmm. the ball is nowhere near him because he has to have those hands in order to catch the football so if the more you can get him to do that the better it is for you you know it sounds like an obvious point but it's a really good point (laughs) that you don't don't think about let's take a look at the wide receivers the texas depth chart mike davis has really been the deep target for this texas offense whether it was garrett gilbert in the first game against Rice or it was Case McCoy in the Rose Bowl. Mike Davis has been the deep guy. Darius White behind him, only 28 yards receiving. Take a look at Jackson Shipley. He is the H, the H receiver, at least in this Brian Harson offense. 139 yards so far. It has really been the money guy on third down. And then Marquise Goodwin and John Harris at the Z spot. Jackson, Jackson Shipley uh, has really been the quarterback's, you could say maybe they're security blanket on third down certainly case mccoy looked for him in the byu game in the second half and then shipley also made some big catches from david ash on the uh, zone read zone read play action on third downs you take a closer look at the quarterbacks and brian harson is instructing his guys right here you're going to see them this is really a drill that we've seen all summer and all fall long and once again ahmad focusing on your footwork but also keeping your eyes downfield well and you're going to be busy 
particularly when sometimes there's a breakdown in pass protection. That happens in the course of a game. I, I always remember Coach Brown saying, those guys are on scholarship, too, on the other side of the ball. Right. That being said, there are going to be uncomfortable moments in a ball game, particularly for a quarterback. When you have a black jersey and you're not allowed to be hit in practice and you have a guy from UCLA or BYU that's trying to take your head off, you need to have some busy feet, but they need to be purposeful also. You need to move them in the right position to still be able to make plays. And this is all these drills continue to do with them. As you can tell him, he's also working on their shoulders. Quarterbacks are taught point that shoulder where you want to throw the football as you saw Ash throw there, mm -hmm. and it will increase your accuracy for sure. Oh, the Texas quarterback's getting ready for Iowa State. You're going to look at DKR. Texas practice will continue here on Longhorn Network right after this. Oh, welcome back to Texas practice. When Texas runs the ball for more than 200 yards, they win, period. Look at what Boise State and Brian Harson for a lot of those games were able to do when they rushed for over 200 yards. Alabama, they've been pretty darn good the last couple years. And Texas, right there with Penn State at 22-0. They had 284 rushing yards at UCLA. You can see with that stat why there was such an emphasis on getting a downhill and serious running game back to the 40 acres through three games. It looks like they have. One of the reasons they have is Stacy Searles. You see the coach right there with the... Texas sweater right there the, and the uh, ball cap. Now he's getting ready, obviously. He's done a lot of things with this offensive line, but one of the things this offensive line, when you think about it, Ahmad, is that they face such a good defensive line in summer camp. We talked about how good this Texas defensive line was. How does that help you whenever you get out in quote unquote the real world you got to face other teams I remember KD when I was a player here taking on guys like Wayne McGarity and Kwame Cavill and Roy Williams and BJ Johnson when you get to games there aren't going to be many players with their type of skill with their type of hands and you look at it you had three or four different wide receivers even in our group now that will resemble every wide receiver you will go against in the Big 12. And much like the offensive line, the same thing. You have a sturdy frame in an Ashton Dorsey who's quick off of the ball. You have the larger frame, of course, in Keiston Randall, who's big, powerful, who you have to double team. And then you have pass rushers. Of course, Alex Okafor mm -hmm. and Jackson Jeffcoat. These are some of the, the top defensive linemen in this, con in this conference, which really helps them. You talk about the young center. I mean, imagine going against Dorsey and Howell and Keiston Randall every day, and it gets bumpy. You know, people start bumping their guns and talking a little bit because uh, you're around these guys 24-7. And the one thing that you have to learn here at Texas is how to compete against the best. And this is this has really benefited both sides of the ball, both offensively and defensively, because of the competition they're going against. And it's a point that has to be made because this is one of the toughest training camps Texas has seen, and it has really helped them early on have success on both sides of the ball. Well, and also, not only is the, is the defensive, defensive players for Texas really talented, but also with Manny Diaz's scheme, a lot of stunting, which is what we're seeing right now, right? This is working on stunts and crosses and, and making sure that you know how to pick it up. What's the key here? Well, first and foremost, communication. And it is, it's got to be something that you've worked on throughout practice uh, that you feel comfortable in doing it in a game. And you it goes trust, back to right? your point. Absolutely. If I know for a fact in live action we didn't know it was coming and Keiston Randall goes upfield and Ashton Dorsey comes back underneath and we've seen that look, it is going to help us heighten our awareness as offensive linemen to where when it comes in game and it's a real live rep, you're able to do it. So right now, just even simulating it with guys who are on your offensive line really helps you, and it's the communication. It's uh, your footwork, putting you in the right place to be able to handle a stunt. And so many defenses now, you look at A&M's defense that has evolved into a very aggressive defense, much like Texas is now, a lot of this is, is predicated. Those defenses are predicated on confusing quarterbacks and offensive linemen and giving them different looks. So it's great to have that type of competition in practice and really goes a long way in helping these guys be prepared on Saturdays. What's the technique? Le you know, let's let's say that 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 you know that you have a guard and a tackle here. Does the guard does, do you do you pass off? Do you I mean does the tackle pick up? How you know how technique wise? How do you get this done? Well, it, once again, you'll see as it happens. You never want to let 
uh, your guy go inside without somebody picking him up. Why okay. is that? Because it's the shortest distance to the quarterback. You always want to guy, allow the guy who's overlapping the opportunity to be picked up last because he's taking the long route, as you can see there. Um, but the guys that are coming inside for that guard that's bringing it down to a center, for that tackle that is bringing it down to a guard, you have to make sure that the other guy has latched on to him and has picked him up before you move on to your next assignment. Stacy Cyril's brought in from Georgia. A brand, almost a brand new coaching staff here. New offensive coordinator, new defensive coordinator, new defensive tackles coach in Bo Davis. Cyril's, who was very well respected in the SEC. And is it no surprise that when Mack went to go get an offensive line and defensive line coach, he went to the Southeastern Conference? Not at all. Why? Because they run the football more than any other conference, and you have to defend against the run more than any other conference. I should say with top talent like that, top-notch talent for sure, on both sides of the ball. And, you know, there are some sturdy and heavy running backs 